Hey, how's it going everyone? This is K Collection. So yeah, this game, it's pretty damn fun. Now it was recommended to me by a few subscribers of mine and I thought, why not check it out? It seemed pretty cool. A nice mashup of different anime characters throughout different series. I don't know majority of them. That's how much of a filthy casual I am. But, you know, I, I know Kirito, SAO, uh, a few other characters here and there. Valkyrie Chronicles, Excel World, I believe? I can't remember, but... This is my first impressions video on Crossing Void, and I have to say, it's a great game. Okay, so, this game was officially released about a week ago. I didn't start playing till maybe two days ago because uh, initially when it was first launched, I downloaded it. And, um, I mean, <laughs> there were a lot of server issues. The loading was long, the disconnection was a hassle, so I thought, why not just wait a few days, maybe they will fix it from what I could tell yeah they pretty much fixed it with the occasional disconnection here and there not a big hassle as before but let's start with the gotcha because we all love walking into hell don't we the roller coaster of emotions the salt we just love it don't we so every gotcha game obviously has a limited banner right now we get to summon or fail to summon Alice from SAO I really want her she's possibly my favorite SAO character, but, uh, you know, my luck pretty much sucks in every gacha games. There is a pity system, which I can definitely appreciate. Every time you fail summoning Alice, the probability of her coming up will increase. Now, this also works if you get another S-grade character. So, spooks will not affect the probability, I think. Let me check real quick if I could click correctly. God damn, there you go. So, obtaining a character other than the limited S character. So, that's great already. Screw you, Fire Emblems and the goddamn spooks. I hate them so much. Also, like Epic 7, if you do play that game, there is a guarantee summon of the rate of character if you fail a certain amount of times. So, uh, in this game, if you fail 90 times, your 91st summon will be a guaranteed rate up character. I was about to say servant. I play too much FGO, I swear. So that's how it works. I, I do like the pity system. And uh, there are two currency, like a voucher ticket and my go. I, I, my pronunciation is shit. Don't judge me. But you have to purchase that. Uh, obviously, I don't have enough because, you know, I'm broke. But, you know, gotta look at the bright side. Maybe I'll get more. So that's the limited banner. Let's go back real quick. Now, this is something I really like. Uh, I may spend 10 bucks, but I'll talk about this a bit later. So, there's always essentially uh, three other banners. Uh, well, first off, let's say, you know, the normal banner is equivalent to the story banner in FGO. Uh, you know, it's just randomized characters. It's great for beginners um, if you don't want the rate up characters. So, that's an option. Also, every day you get to summon on one of these banners for free. And then you're going to have to use um, resources. And the first banner, there's an in-battle character. This is the character you will use you know, to fight. And right now, um, Izaya? I, pronunciations, uh, again, it's horrible. But I don't know who he is. Seems uh, like a psychotic character with that knife and that smirk. But maybe he's good. I wouldn't know. And the second banner is a support banner banner so uh this game heavily involves with uh team building I'll, I'll talk about the teams and support a bit later and i already talked about the normal and what i like about this is that you get to init initially excuse me it's a 10 shot so you have a you no know, 10 shots and then you are guaranteed one s grade character and uh you get to see what you get first and then if you decide you want them you get to pay 10 bucks and keep all 10 characters, or yeah, 10 characters, support included. So, as an example, let's go with the free shuffle. You have this nice little animation right there. And then, there you go. You're always going to have, uh, not always guaranteed an A great character, I believe. Let me try again. <laughs> so, you can keep refreshing it over and over again. No, maybe you, you do get an A. Uh, character and the last one will always be an S so I've never experienced a double S before I tried multiple times which sucks but that's okay so if you, you know 10 bucks isn't too much if you have some money to spend and you think you're gonna invest in this game quite often then hey why not spend 10 bucks to get the characters 
or maybe yeah get the characters you may want so i do like this system i wish freaking fgo has this oh my god i would save so much money so that's basically the gacha in a nutshell Okay, so that's the gacha. Very simple. Nothing too complex. Now, let's talk about the characters. First, I want to mention the grading or the rarity system. So, for rarity, you have C grade all the way to S grade, being the most rarest for a character or support. Now, the difference between the grades, let's say what's the difference between an A and a C, are the talents that they initially start with. So, for example, let's go to Asuna. She's ranked A. And she should have three talents. And talents are basically a uh, status upgrade or a boost in status. As you can see, physical defense, you know, increased base attack, etc, etc. C has one, B2, A3, and then S has four talents in total. So obviously it's better to get an S ranked character, but that's okay. So initially, a lot of people were wondering if you can improve the rarity of a uh, character, right? Because, for example, uh, I got this A ranked Asuna, which was given for free, but you can also pull a C ranked Asuna, which you can work with to increase the grade. So yes, you can do that. I don't know the specifics yet, but I'll figure that out in the future. So for example, you know, for me, when you start this game, you get to complete a mission, and once you complete those missions, you get to choose one free S ranked character. Initially, I was about to choose Kirito, because you no, know, he looks awesome. Not the greatest protagonist, but he's kind of cool, I have to admit. But I was pulling for, I believe, Alice, and I got Kirito uh, B ranked. So initially, I could still get Kirito if I'm lazy to, I guess, rank this one up. But uh, it seems like a waste because I could invest some time into, you know, this B ranked Kirito, get him up to S ranked, and then save that ticket, the free S ranked ticket, for another character that may help me out. Think of it like Fire Emblem Heroes. You get a two star hero. If you work really hard on that specific hero or character, you get to, you know, transform them into a five star. Same concept. Again, I don't know the specifics on how to do it yet, but uh, depending on how well or how invested uh, I am in this game, I may make some videos on that. Now, let's talk about positions, team builds, and what supports actually do in this game. So, the positions of your characters, it matters a lot. It's so important. I can't stress that enough because I felt like a complete dumbass the first time playing. I mean, obviously, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but, you know, I got wrecked pretty badly and I still feel bad. But hey, it's a learning experience. So, there are three positions. The rare, which is the left mid and front typically the front guy will be attacked the most and this all amounts to the type of attacks the enemy has and this applies to you as well so as an example asana has a specific attack that only targets the front enemy you cannot choose the mid or the rare she also has a special attack that only targets the mid now this adds a whole layer of strategy into this game because let's say you need to kill the front enemy now and she has her special attack ready and you know it's gonna kill him but, you know, you can't really target him. She only targets the mid character. So you have to plan ahead and strategize accordingly. For supports, basically how they work is that by equipping a support to a character in battle, they will be able to use some abilities. As an example, she can cleanse debuffs while she can remove enemies buff. Now, there are specific pairings you can attach characters to. As an example, Yuki will work great with Asuna, obviously, because, you know, both from SAO. So to check who they pair up with, you know, Yuki works well with Asuna and Kirito. You just go to a cross skill, and that's how you check. And this way, you unlock a special attack if you pair the right characters together. Now, you know, starting out, I just got lucky this time, but starting out, you won't have specific pairings. Uh, but that's okay. You know, sometimes in battle, for example, I do need to cleanse debuff. Right, I would rather have that than a you know a pairing that matches. You know, it just depends on the type of battle. But in doing so, by pairing someone together with the right support, you will unlock a special attack. If you don't pair the right support, then basically the slot will be blank. You can't use the special attack. So. Team building is very important, and uh, as you acquire more support and you know, characters, you, know, you have better combinations. There's also some other ways to make your character stronger besides just leveling them up. So let me go to Asuna real quick. By improving their star, her stats will increase. Now this doesn't mean her rarity goes up, but 
giving her more stars by using these resources. Like I said, her stats will go up, making her more efficient in battle. You can also go to skills. You could improve the skill itself. Let's show you right now. So it costs you some money, but that's okay. It's worth it. So improving the skill will help you in battle, obviously, and equipments, that's very important as well. So you get equipments through challenge quests, I'll show you in a minute, but you could level the equipment up and then equip it to a character, and there are four slots. And to get more equipments, you basically go to challenge and uh, treasure hunt, that's where I've been farming a bit. There are other challenges as well, and they will give you different awards accordingly. It says right there, you know, gotcha voucher, equipment, and materials. And you know, Golden Storm gives you more coins. So let's talk about combat now. Let's go to story, let's fight this guy. And I'll go over the basics, or whatever I know. I'm still a noob, so I'm still learning myself. There is an auto battle, which is always appreciated. Nice background right there. I forgot her name. She's from that uh, devil working that McDonald's anime. It's been so long. All right, as you can see, you have seven rounds to beat the enemies, basically. If you don't, you will lose. For combat, there are two bars on the bottom, and this is the core mechanic. The skill bar, which is the blue one on the bottom left, and the climax bar, which is more so for specialized attack, and that's the yellow one on the bottom right. And each action will require some form of skill points. Not all of them, as you can see the first one will not require any skill points whatsoever, and each turn will give you a few skill points to use. So, for example, let's use uh, this three point right here, right? I used up three skill points, and in turn, it gives me three climax points, which I can save up and use for future specialized attack. This one takes zero, so I get to save skill points to use different abilities. You're going to have to strategize on what you want to prioritize and use. Also, I mentioned this already, but positioning is so important. Uh, few attacks will do AoE damage, some will target mid, rare, but... As I said before, typically the front guy will get hit the most. Let's use her fourth skill, which gives three more climax bar or climax points. And this is very important. The first letter of the attack will determine where they're going to attack. So A is AOE, F for front, M mid, R rare. Let's use this, and here we attack. So I have 9 Climax points, and I get to use a special ability, which I, I'm going to save it. I want to use uh, one of the SAO characters. So I'm going to use her basic attack. Nice AoE move right there. And combat gets a bit more complex with, you know, cleansing debuffs and removing your enemy's buff as well. And she uses her special attack. Not too bad. Ooh. 350 damage. Still living. So I have 9 climax points. I cannot use Asuna's special attack yet. But let's just continue with this. The key is to get more climax points so you can use special attacks. For example, this one. Kirito's Starburst screen. And by doing so, it depletes my climax points. Now I have four. Let's use, uh, not the spell. Let's heal everyone. Again, just use the... Don't always use the highest uh, skill point required because you, you're kind of wasting skill points. Sometimes you gotta strategize and save uh, some abilities. So there's no shame in using the first attack, which takes zero skill points. I'm still gonna save it. This. Now, the downfall of using a zero uh, skill point attack means you won't receive any climax points. So that's the bad thing about it. Let's purify. So 20 is the max for the point system. 
now I can use. I can use yes, use this, and I want to use Asuna's uh, final attack. Okay, so this is going to be an example of using the right support with a character because Yuki and Asuna works well with each other. They're, they are meant to be paired with each other. I unlock a special attack and the first letter is mid. Uh, there's only one enemy, so it's going to hit the enemy Kirito. And you get to see a awesome crossing ability. And... Done. Well, there you have it. That's my first impression of Crossing Void. Overall, it's a very fun game. I highly recommend you giving it a shot, especially if you're a fan of the shows. If you watch a lot of these anime characters in action before, hey, more reason to try it out, right? For myself, I only know a few characters and uh, nostalgic you know it's a bit nostalgic seeing these old characters some of them I forgot their names but for myself I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to invest my time into this I'll play it here and there but there's just a lot of other games I'm currently playing FGOJP and A, E7, Arc Knights is coming out in the future so I have a lot on my plate but if I do become invested into Crossing Void, let me know if you're interested in me making videos, maybe character spotlights, maybe event guides if there are events or something. So let me know. Overall, give it a shot. I think you'll like it. Special thanks to all my patrons for supporting me. If you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more fate content. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join my Discord server. All links are in the description. Have an awesome day, everyone. Till next time.